What are agency bonds and why are new issues paying up to 6%? What questions should an investor ask before diving into agency bonds? And what would my agency bond strategy be if I were to add some to my portfolio right now? Hello, Super Saver. I hope you're healthy and well. Agency bonds with yields of up to 6% and how you might decide if they're a good fit for your fixed income portfolio. That's what I'll be talking about in today's video. As usual, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. I've also included timestamps in the video description below for our members and super savers who are already familiar with agency bonds and want to skip ahead to the section on what questions should an investor ask before diving into agency bonds. Agency bonds are issued by a federal government agency other than the U.S. Treasury or by government-sponsored enterprises, GSEs. So federal government agency bonds are direct obligations of our government and therefore explicitly backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, exactly like U.S. Treasuries. GSEs, government-sponsored enterprises, are not explicitly backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. However, GSEs are implicitly backed by the U.S. government. Implicit in this context means that it's universally understood that our government wouldn't let a GSE default on its obligations, even though it's not written directly in the law, as it is for federal government agency bonds and U.S. Treasuries. Here's the summary table that I created for our latest member video on agency bonds, which should help simplify your agency bond journey. This column shows the name of the agency bond issuer. These are the most common names you'll come across. This column shows the purpose of the agency bond issuer, be it a federal government agency or a GSE. If you're interested in learning more about one of these agency bond issuers in particular, please do drop me a comment below and let me know. In any case, this column shows whether the agency bond issuer is a federal government agency or a GSE. This column shows whether the agency bond issuer's debt obligations are explicitly backed or implicitly backed by our government. As you can see, most agency bonds are issued by GSEs and only implicitly backed by our government. The market generally considers an explicit backing by the U.S. government, like Ginny May here, and like U.S. Treasuries also, a notch better in terms of credit quality than implicit backing, as in these instances. But that's also one of the reasons why agency bonds tend to pay a bit more than treasuries. Higher risk, higher return. That's not to say that agency bonds are high risk, just that they're higher risk relative to treasuries, which for all practical purposes are free of credit risk, as they are backed by the full faith and credit of our government. As you can see here, it's not really such a big difference anyway. The highest quality agency bonds carry the same AAA ranking from Moody's and AA plus from S&P as U.S. Treasuries do. Interest earned on agency bonds is generally subject to federal income taxes, and in some cases, also subject to state and local income taxes. This column shows whether the interest earned from the agency bond issuer is exempt from state and local income taxes when held in a taxable account. If you want to better understand the risks and rewards of agency bonds versus treasuries, or take a deeper dive, then join our member community of super super savers and check out this latest members video on agency bonds. I've linked it in the video description below as well. Let's move on now to the next section. In my mind, the most important question you should ask yourself if you're considering adding agency bonds to your fixed income portfolio is how much additional risk are you willing to take on for the additional return? As I mentioned earlier, agency bonds are considered a bit riskier than U.S. Treasuries, with one of the primary reasons being that most of them are only implicitly backed by the U.S. government, rather than explicitly backed like Treasuries. Agency bonds are nonetheless typically perceived to be relatively safe, relatively low risk when compared to other types of fixed income instruments, such as munis, corporates, and junk bonds. From a return perspective, these are the yields on agency bonds at the time of this taping, and these are the yields on U.S. Treasuries at the time of this taping. So if you're thinking of transitioning a part of your fixed income portfolio from U.S. Treasuries to agency bonds, 
It only really makes sense if you're looking at maturities out here in my mind. Because for the shorter maturities, the difference in yield is probably too small to justify the incremental effort and risk for the average retail investor. Now, if you do decide that you're ready for a bit more risk in exchange for a bit more return, that you're ready to move from U.S. Treasuries to agency bonds, then here are the additional questions or considerations you should take into account before diving into agency bonds. Does it matter or not whether the interest earned on your agency bonds will be exempt from state and local income taxes? If it matters, say for example, because you're buying in a taxable account and you live somewhere with high state and local income taxes, then you should probably focus on agency bond issuers like these three here, which are commonly seen on the leading brokerage platforms. If exemption from state and local income taxes does not matter, then you have a wider selection of agency bond issuers to choose from, including these three here and others like them. Also, be aware that if you sell a bond before maturity for a profit, that profit will be subject to federal and state capital gains tax. But as I always say, everyone's financial journey is different. So if you have more tax questions, Or if you're still wondering whether agency bonds are a good fit for you after going through the rest of this section, my general recommendation is to consult a tax and or financial advisor who understands your specific circumstances, preferences, and or expectations. Moving on to question number two, are you prepared for higher minimum investment requirements? Agency bonds from what we've seen and in particular for those that are purchased as new issues have minimum investment requirements ranging from $1,000 for Freddie Mac to $10,000 for the federal home loan banks and all the way up to $25,000 for Ginny Mae. Question three, are you prepared to hold to maturity? Yes, the agency bond market is considered fairly liquid, but it is less liquid than the treasury market, almost by definition, given that U.S. treasuries are considered to be the most liquid fixed income investment in the world. And this is especially true if you're not trading large volumes. So if you end up having to sell an agency bond for whatever reason, you may get a lower price or have to wait longer to find a buyer than you expected versus if you had to sell a treasury security with a similar maturity. Question four, do you need or want call protection? In our current high interest rate environment, practically all of the agency bonds we've seen on the market are not call protected meaning the agency can choose to repay the bond early, usually subject to a minimum no-call period. Question five, do you know what fees your broker charges for agency bonds? From what we've seen for new issue agency bonds, Fidelity, Schwab, and Vanguard do not charge any fees if purchased online. For secondary market trades, the standard fee for all four leading brokers appears to be a dollar per thousand dollar face amount capped at $250 maximum. And depending on the broker, there may also be a minimum fee per secondary market trade online. Compare that to treasury transactions, which as most of you know, typically carry no fees at all at most major brokerage firms, if done online. So to be clear, we're not planning on adding significant amounts of agency bonds to our personal portfolio at the moment given that I think interest rates will continue to trend upwards. Plus, I want to keep our fixed income portfolio fairly liquid with shorter maturity T-bills. But if my individual circumstances, preferences, and or expectations were different, say that I'm nearing or already in retirement, for example, believe that the 6% will go away quickly, and I'm willing to accept the slightly higher risk return profile that some of these agency bonds offer, as some of our members and super savers seem to be, Here's what I would do if I were purchasing agency bonds in a taxable account. Buy new issue agency bonds while making sure that I meet the minimum investment requirements. Choose bonds with a coupon of at least 6% or higher from an agency where the interest earned is exempt from state and local income taxes, given how high the state and local tax rates are where we live. Make sure that the agency bonds are of the highest credit quality, which means AAA from Moody's, and or double A plus from S&P. Select ones that are call protected. And if I can't find any that are, try to find ones with first call dates as far out in the future as possible and hold my agency bonds until maturity 
or until called. So that's my decision-making process and agency bond strategy. Yours may be different based on your individual circumstances, preferences, and or expectations. But curious minds want to know, what are your thoughts on agency bonds? Ready to learn more or are treasuries just fine for you? Leave a comment below and let me and the other super savers and members know. Now, if treasuries are more your style, check out this latest video here on where we stand with our T-bill ladder. If on the other hand, you're ready to learn even more about agency bonds and be as well versed as possible on the subject matter, then check out these latest member videos for a deeper dive into the world of fixed income and join our first live members Q&A this month on July 14th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Click on this join button on our channel page or the join link in the video description below for more details about Diamond Nest Egg membership. As always, Super Saver, I hope this video was educational and that you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to share with those you care about and hit that thumbs up and... See you again very soon with more brand new wealth building content for your financial journey.